Ladies and gentlemen, the past five years has seen the Budapest Economic Forum become a major event in socio-economic policy world. The theme this year, the dichotomy of labor shortages and high unemployment, is pertinent to many countries, but particularly to Hungary. The reasons for labor shortages in Europe are mainly because of a skills gap and mismatch. The gap, because one in five struggle with basic reading and writing. One in four has poor numeracy. And when it comes to basic digital skills, 40% of Europeans fall short. In Hungary, this figure is 50. Yet nowadays, 90% of jobs require at least some level of digital skills. The mismatch, because across Europe, 30% of graduates work in jobs that don't match their qualification and 40% of employers claim they can't find people with the right skills. Here in Hungary, that figure is 57%. Too few people feel they have skills to be entrepreneurs. And too few choose vocational programs, yet all evidence suggests that they are a springboard to employment. The new skills agenda for Europe sets out how cooperation at the European level can help namely to improve the quality and relevance of available skills, to make skills more visible and comparable across borders and sectors, to increase intelligence on what skills are needed where, and to mobilize all actors to join the skills challenge. Our societies face new challenges, from aging populations to mass migration, from digitalization to globalization. Technology is reshaping the way we live, work and do business. While effective skills policies can help, we must also modernize our social protection systems and labor markets to meet these challenges. This was the thinking behind a European pillar of social rights, an outline of which we presented in March. It contains essential principles for labor markets and social systems that are fair and that function well. It promotes equal opportunities, including access to lifelong learning, an area for Hungary where only 6% of adults are engaged compared to 11% in the European Union. This is a key factor to enable people to realize their full potential. Of course, the policy responses to the wide range of issues in the pillar must be well thought through as they affect our everyday lives. This is why we launched the public consultation, running until the end of 2016. I invite all of you here to join the debate and look forward to hearing the outcomes of your discussion at this year's forum. I wish you a successful event.